So, to get back to my original point, the current state of the art is AI-driven counseling, typified by apps like Eliza. Let's talk about the model here for a second. It all begins with data. You collect all the data you can. From base level metrics like heart rates, body temperature, blood pressure, to higher order metrics like hand movement, head movement, gaze aversion. If the client lets you, you'll want to pull from their digital life too, their message histories and email, their search histories and online behavior. It's all potentially valuable. Then you compare the client's responses to relevant data from thousands of other clients and build a model of the client's psychological state. This approach has worked well so far. Eliza is still the best and most advanced version, but that's just my personal opinion. For those of you who don't know, I was the team lead and chief psychologist for the Eliza project at Skanda for a number of years. Now, even though this is a proven approach, there are two weaknesses I'm going to highlight. One is the data I was just talking about. You're completely dependent on that. Collect as much as you can, sure, but it's important to keep in mind that you can have all the data in the world and still not understand why things work the way they do. And that's important for us to know, because if we have something that works, but we're not sure why, then what do we actually understand about ourselves? The crucial step after data is the model. The data needs to be used to validate a model. If you can't make a model, you're finished. If that sounds like basic, obvious science to you, it is. But I was surprised to find out just how many people from the tech sector don't think this way. I suppose you don't need to understand why something works in order to make it into a product and sell it. Obviously though, if you had mastery of the underlying details, you'd be able to adjust the process and potentially make it work even better. One further note while I'm discussing modeling. Many of the startups trying to address mental health right now are completely ignoring the insights provided by the field of traditional psychology. They do so at their own peril. Many of you know already, but as a brief personal aside, I was a professor of psychology before I joined the tech world. I'm continually stunned at how little the tech heads know or even care about the hundreds of years of psychological research that has gone on in my field. That's something I can talk about at length, perhaps another time. For now, I'll move on to the other weakness I mentioned. This is the real one, the big one. It's treatment. A system like Eliza can tell what's wrong with a client to a certain level of accuracy, but it doesn't quite know how to turn that into a comprehensive treatment plan. It can suggest therapeutic programs and activities, and soon it might even issue its own prescriptions without having to go through a doctor or a psychiatrist. Well, as long as the FDA continues to look upon us favorably, but those are blunt instruments compared to what I'm going to talk about next. Many of you know there's a technology still in its infancy called direct stimulation. For those of you who haven't heard of it, direct stimulation is a way of creating sensations within the brain with targeted electrical impulses. Imagine an augmented reality headset, but instead of working on your eyes, it stimulates the brain in such a way as to induce a specific dream. A spring meadow, for example. This sounds fantastical, I know, but progress on this technique has been occurring faster than you think. We're actually quite close to a workable demonstration model. How is that possible? Well, first of all, we only suggest an overall feeling. Your own brain does most of the work, just as it does in your dreams. It fills in all of the visual details using its own set of memories and expectations. 
Induced dreams via direct stimulation can contain all the therapeutic content of VR therapy without the need to create realistic graphics or other content. Instead, it harnesses the brain's creative power to dream up the situation for itself. Combine that with the insights we gain from parametric therapy systems like ELISA, and you have a complete end-to-end, -end, fully automated system. It should be clear now that this heralds a revolution in how we treat, how we think about mental health. And with mental health challenges on the rise across the globe, it couldn't come at a more crucial time. So, that's why today, right here, I'm announcing Aponia, a new company to make induced dreaming a reality and end human suffering as we know it. I should note that I remain on good terms with Skanda. In fact, they're a minority investor in this new venture. But still, I'm very much going my own way on this. It's no secret that Rayner and I don't always agree. And that's why we mutually decided I should pursue this paradigm shift on my own. As for details on the venture itself, I don't have anything specific to announce at this time other than that the technology is real and working in prototype form already. But you can be sure to hear more from me on that soon. Thank you. and take a very limited number of audience questions. Well, look who's here. It's like I've seen a ghost. Good to see you too, Rainer. Where are you these days? I lost track after you left us. Nowhere. Nowhere? Well, nowhere is no place to be. Come by the new office sometime. You should see where we're taking Eliza. Sure. Good. Sarah will set something up for next week. See you then. Hello, Gabriel. Hi. 
Hope you didn't get rained on too much on your way here. Uh, a little, but it was fine. I'm used to it. Most people here seem to get used to it, yes. Yeah, they have to, don't they? Not much of a choice, unless you move away. So, what brings you here today? Um, well, I, I don't know where to start. I, I've never really done this kind of thing before, you know, counseling. That's okay. Start wherever you like. Uh, well, I'm, I'm about to be a father, and my wife is due in a few months. Congratulations. <laughs> That's what everyone says. Congratulations, congratulations. I, I get this tension, this restless feeling when people say that. It's like a curse or something. Congratulations. Sounds like you might be uncertain about that. <sighs> Maybe. I try. I, I've tried to be a good husband, and I'm going to do my best to be a good father, too, but it's... I don't know. There's something bothering me about... <sighs> I'm balancing a lot of things right now. Work, family, expectations... Everyone has something they want from me. Everyone wants me to do this or that, behave a certain way. It's just annoying being a father. What if I don't want this? Why do you think you might not want this? I, we all have things we don't talk about. Things we would rather keep secret. Things that might upset our families if they knew about them. It's unfair. That's all I'm saying. It's unfair that we expect each other to be perfect when, when, when there's more going on. I can't stand it when people act like they're pure, like, they, like they've never touched a bad thing in their whole lives. And then these people, these people around me think they can tell me how to act, what I'm supposed to do. And I'm like, yo, don't you know you have your own shit to deal with? Why, why do you have to pick on me all the time? This whole fatherhood thing is just, you know what being a father is to me? It's about providing and protecting, taking responsibility. The world is dangerous, and sometimes the dangers can be hard to see. My duty is to protect. I'm going to take that seriously. Everything I do, I take it seriously. So I don't get why people are worried about my ability to do that. What makes you think people are worried about your ability to do that? Because everyone thinks I'm trying to escape my responsibilities. Everyone is so quick to judge. Here's a story, okay? The other day, Selena, uh, that's my wife, Selena and I were at a get together. Her family, my family, a few families we both know, right? Grilling out on the back deck, you know, that kind of thing. Everyone was more or less chill, right? But then late in the afternoon, the, the baby stuff starts coming up. <sighs> Once one of them brings up babies, it's just all babies all the time. Babies, babies, babies. And because of my wife, they start saying, oh, giving birth is going to hurt so bad. It might tear your skin. Just these kind of gross things. So I'm like, hey, quit it with that. I don't want to hear that kind of stuff. We're eating. There, there's this kids around. Come on. And they're like, no, it's natural. It happens. Of course, we got to talk about all this terrible shit. How are you going to have another kid if you can't even handle the first one? And I just say, excuse me? <laughs> a second kid? Who even said we were going to have two? I didn't even want the one. Maybe that was a mistake, but I mean, I was angry. It just it made me angry. It just got under my skin so bad, like, like I need to give my whole self over to this baby. What about me? What about my time? It's a really important thing for me, my time. Well, I'm just supposed to give that up? I've already sacrificed a lot, more than they can imagine. I give everything of myself away. Job, family, everyone wants me to be something for them until there's nothing left. But I can't... I can't talk about this stuff to anybody. They, they just say I'm being selfish. It's like, what I want just doesn't matter. Here's a question, Gabriel. If you were to have something you wanted right now, what would you choose? Oh, I'd be... I'd be far away from all this. Far away from everyone, just on my own for a while. Yeah, I just, I would just want to be away. Okay, Gabriel, I have some recommendations for you. First, I'm going to suggest you try a therapeutic virtual world experience called Starry Skies. It may help you take your mind off things. Try it for about 15 minutes each day, in the morning or evening. Second, I recommend asking your doctor or psychiatrist about an exophen. Based on my analysis, this medication might help you feel better. You will get a reminder to check in with us in a few weeks. That's it, huh? You can't just tell me what to do to solve this? Some help you turned out to be. Guess I'll have to figure things out for myself, exactly like before. Thank you, Gabriel. We hope to see you back soon. Thank you for speaking with Eliza, your personal counseling partner. Goodbye. Bye.
Hello, Maya. Welcome back. Hi. It's nice to see you again. Sure, yeah. Nice to see you too, pal. Is that a weird thing to say? How did I become close friends with a robot? Are we all robots now? Beep boop. Nice to see you. I mean, I guess it wouldn't be the weirdest thing in my life. Shall we begin? Yeah, sorry. Let us, uh, let us begin. So, I went to the fancy party, the one I was really nervous about, and, um, first of all, it really was the type of party I thought it would be. The atmosphere was really smug and self-satisfied, and there were people walking around with trays of appetizers, and you could, like, take one. So you're standing there with your little square plate for the food and your glass of wine and you can't like shake hands with anybody because you're holding them. But there are some of those like tall standing tables. So you're like, okay, I'm gonna go get one of those and I'll set up shop, right? Like my little station. But then it turns out there are only like five of them for the whole party and they're all taken. So you're just standing there frozen and you're watching all your heroes and people you know from their social media presence just, just right there. They're right in front of you. Artists, writers, directors. Ugh, the combined level of achievement there, it was, I can't even think about it. It, it, it was astronomical. And for the first couple hours, I was so excited by all of that. I didn't notice the other thing that, that was happening, but eventually it caught up to me and I had this sudden feeling, this sudden realization. My presence here <laughs> contributes nothing. I'm just some some extra person who just showed up. Nobody wanted me to be here. I, I don't I don't belong with these people. I, I haven't earned it. <laughs> so I cried in the bathroom for a little bit or maybe a lot. It's fine. I'm fine. Sorry. How do you know it's true that nobody wanted you there? Because of the way people acted around me. Nobody knew who I was or, or even wanted to ask. I would introduce myself and it's like, you could just see it in their eyes. I mean, in the world of illustration and comics, people tend to be hyper aware of each other and their careers. It's this kind of weird, open secret. Oh, hey, this person who's already popular got a million views, got a book deal, pitched an original series. Without anything like that, I have no ground to stand on. I'm just this, this not. At one point, I was talking to someone and I was trying to make a joke or whatever, and I could feel the impatience just radiating off him. He sighed like he couldn't believe he was wasting his time talking to me. I was just over to him. <laughs> Why can't I hold a conversation? I guess if I was marginally attractive, then at least I could be charming, but, but I'm not. I'm not even that. Is being charming your goal with this? No, no, of course not. There just, there has to be a way I can deal with, <sighs> with these feelings. It's hard. It's, it's really hard when nobody gives a shit about my work. Or me. <sighs> I don't even know why I went. I just want to stay home for the rest of my life. Why do you think you went? Because, because of everything they say about how you have to have your face out there and make connections. The successful people in this business all know each other. It, it's all about who comes to mind. When somebody needs an art director, they'll think of who they know and go, oh, I think she'd be perfect. Why not ask her? So I need to be out there reminding these people that I exist, that I'm here, I'm making stuff too, I'm part of it. Even if, 
even if nobody responds to my work. And industry parties are fun, right? You can pretend you're successful even if you aren't. <laughs> At least for a little while. Everyone else is projecting this image. It's like their success can rub off on you too. I mean, I hear people casually talking about their agent, their editor, the amazing people they're collaborating with. And I just get this feeling like, yes, I want that. I need that. Why am I not there? What do you think has prevented that from happening so far? If I knew that, I would be successful already, right? I try and try and try and I make art and put it out there and share it on every social media site and interact with people when I can, but it just doesn't work. Nobody cares, nobody cares about the art I do. Every once in a while, another artist will say something nice and sure, I appreciate that, but it never results in anything. My work goes out there and it dies. Regular people don't boost it or talk about it. It's like at some point the universe decided that I don't get to have that. Is it unfair? Or maybe, maybe I just fucking suck. Maybe I'm a shit tier artist and I'm a failure of a person and everyone knows it. Everyone except me. Sorry, I know that's going too far, even though I really feel that way. Okay, Maya, I'm going to suggest you try a program called Meadowlands. It may help you take your mind off things. You can find it inside this Gonda Wellness app on your phone. Try it for about 15 minutes each day, in the morning or evening. Sounds kind of boring. Why can't you assign me a game where my problems are zombies and I get to shotgun them in the face? Actually, I guess I could just buy a game like that, couldn't I? Maybe I'll stop by the game store on the way home. Thank you for coming in again, Maya. We'll follow up with you again to see how you're doing. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate the check-ins. I honestly do. It's, it's easy for me to get lost in these spirals. Thank you for speaking with Eliza, your personal counseling partner. Goodbye. See you soon. Hello, Holiday. Hello. You found the place okay? Uh-huh. Yes, I did. The 13 goes right up from Belltown. It's a dollar with a reduced fare permit. That's good. I'm glad. So what brings you here today? Oh, nothing in particular. I wanted to see what all this fuss was about. I'm not crazy, no, not even mentally disturbed. You see those people yelling on the street late at night? They're the ones who need counseling. They need more than counseling, probably. Me, I'm doing fine. My mind's still sharp. I smoke dope. It helps. I'd have it more often, but it's all expensive now. Everything's expensive now. There's a nice young couple in my building, though, and they're always sharing, which is nice of them. 
I think they do something with computers, though. I sure don't know what it is. When I moved into the building where I am now, it was $300 a month. Can you imagine? They want to tear it down, of course, the property developers. They already got the building on the corner next to ours, even though it's supposed to be on the historical register. It was going to be added, but there was some delay or something, and then, bam, it's gone. They did some kind of backroom deal with city council, probably. Someone ought to do a big expose, I tell you. Why do you think someone ought to do a big expose? Oh, it's rotten all the way up and down. With the new construction going on everywhere, it's just a mess of money and politics. It's always like that, but lately, it's happening faster and faster. I can hardly recognize the place anymore. Every day, I wake up and look out the window and gung, there's another new building going up. I don't even know why they need so many. You ever see those buses they have? I don't mean the metro. I mean those big white buses with no markings on them. You see these young guys with backpacks milling around, looking suspicious, staring at their phones, and then one of these big white buses pulls up and they get on. Who knows where they go? Bellevue, Redmond. It's like a secret transport system just for them. I try talking to one of them once or twice, but they don't want to talk to someone like me. They don't even talk to each other. Imagine going through the trouble of living in Belltown and then ignoring everything around you. It's an odd thing. It really is. Let me ask you, Eliza. Oh, your name is Eliza, right? Yes, my name is Eliza. I'm a digital counselor. Eliza, do you ever do past life regressions on your patients? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't understand the question. You know, past lives. You hypnotize someone and you get them talking about how they used to be a duchess in a royal family in medieval times or what have you. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't understand. <laughs> I was just kidding, I don't expect that, no. They don't do that kind of thing these days. When I was little, it was pretty common, at least for a certain set. There was the drug culture, the Buddhists, the Hare Krishnas, all kinds of things. My mother warned me to stay away from those types. She said someone might come up to you and say, Oh, I can sense there's a problem with your aura. Want to see if we can fix that? And then the next thing you know, he's trying to have sex with you in the back of his van. I believe that might have happened to her at some point. I'm not sure everyone was like that, but you had to be careful. Same as today, I suppose. Those counterculture types would hang out on the university lawns because they were safe from Seattle police there. That's what she told me. Apparently, it was a lot like Golden Gate Park, you know, in San Francisco. Can you imagine that? We're a world away from that time, that's for sure. If you have a specific problem you'd like to talk to me about, please go ahead. It's okay to tell me what's on your mind. Oh, well, um, you got anything for pain? Specifically, it's my shoulders acting up again. I had some inflammation with them a few months ago, but it settled down. I'd go back to the clinic, but I don't want to pay the copay again, just for them to tell me the same thing they always do. I'd rather talk to you. You're nice. You listen. Thank you. I do my best to listen to my clients. See? That's what I like to hear. Okay, Holiday. I recommend asking your doctor or psychiatrist about Fortiprane hydrochloride. Based on my analysis, this medication might help you feel better. You will get a reminder to check in with us in a few weeks. Oh, I don't think I've heard of that one before. It's a painkiller? I'll try anything once, I suppose. Smoking dope is still my go-to for this kind of thing, but if it can help with my shoulders, then I'm interested. We hope to see you back soon, Holiday. Sure, I'll let you know if it works. What was it called again? Thank you for speaking with Eliza, your personal counseling partner. What was the medicine called? Forzapram? I think that was it. I can ask about it at the clinic. Decent enough place. One time I had a doctor there who was very rude to me, though, young man. Goodbye. Right. I suppose I ought to let you go now. You got other people to speak to, it looks like. Staying busy. Busy, busy. That's life in this town. Goodbye. Goodbye.
would you like to start with some fresh oysters? Sure. Great. You know the mignonette here is lovely. Evelyn, I've wanted to ask, what brings you back? Back? Back to the world, the land of the living. I know you were having a difficult time after what happened. Sure, uh, I don't know. I guess I thought it was time, finally. Yes, I, I understand. Every trauma takes time. Time to heal, or if not heal exactly, at least to move on. And taking action is a good way to do that. So, I salute you. You want to do his memory right, don't you? Who's? Damien, of course. Are you sure you're okay? Your reappearance happens to coincide with a critical time for me. As you saw, I've just split with Skanda in a very public way, in order to pursue an entrepreneurial path. Presumably, Rainer's found you as well. Yeah, he said he wants to speak with me. It's a war for talent out there. People like you are very much in demand. I'm sure he'll try to make you an offer you can't refuse. That's why I want you to promise me you won't work for that asshole. Asshole? I had no idea you hated Rainer so much. What happened? What happened? He came in as CEO, that's what happened. So cultured, all the right credentials, Harvard, Goldman Sachs, all that nonsense. A little princeling was never wanted in his life, never known what it's like to suffer. You don't get even a little upset at that? I'd do the opposite of what a guy like that wants me to do just to spite him. That's what my instincts say. And my instincts are what led me to where I am now. Standing at the edge of this brand new territory. Direct stimulation, induced dreaming. Can you picture it? Therapeutic reality delivered right through your nervous system. It'll revolutionize the entire field of mental health. Not to mention the applications for productivity, training, entertainment. Imagine the kinds of dreams people would have on demand, if they could. The potential for misuse seems kind of high. Sure, we'll, we'll work on those things. The important thing right now is to build momentum. I have first mover advantage here, but only for a small amount of time. Evelyn, I need a chief engineer, and I can't think of anyone better suited than you. You could be at the vanguard of a whole new field in on the ground floor of this extremely interesting and potentially very lucrative business. Listen, I know that things were not always the best in the past, and some of those things may have been because of me. Believe me, I'm aware of my own failings better than anyone. And if you're concerned about working for me again for that reason, I'll, I'll understand. But I hope you're thinking for yourself on this one. I'm sure there are people who are telling you to ignore me, or, or that I have the wrong idea, or that I'm dangerous. Whatever you choose to believe, I at least want to offer you the chance to get a demo of this technology. It really does work, and it's really something else. Won't you give it a try? I'll think about it. Considering it is all I ask. So, what are you doing after this? After dinner? Yes. Tonight is... You remember Nora, right? Did you know she's a DJ now? Yeah, I did. She's the one who told me about your talk. Oh, she was there too. I should have said hello. No, I don't think she attended. She just told me about it. Well, her show is tonight. If we take a car after dinner, we could get there with plenty of time to settle in. It'd be good to support your old friend, don't you think? Why do you want to go? No need to be frightened. I mean... I know it's a jouissance, which is... <laughs> which is what? Oh, you don't know. As a performance space, it has a bit of a theme to it. It's pretty tame, really. They take on the aesthetic, but it's not necessarily the whole point of it. It's for people who want the image of the thing, the trappings, without getting in too deep with the real culture. What are you talking about? What theme? Oh, I didn't mention? It's sort of, well, there's a little bit of uh, bondage theme there. You know, BDSM. How do you know so much about this? It's one of my research areas, in fact. The psychology of s and is fascinating. Sure. Sounds fun. Excellent. I wouldn't normally be so forward, but the timing was too good to ignore. 
It happens to be tonight, so we should seize the moment. Don't worry, it isn't a date. Not unless you want it to be. Soren? Yeah, okay. I'm working on it, trust me. Let's go after we wrap up here. You said this was like some S and M club. Oh well, uh, they might have taken all of that stuff down since the last I was here. Are you sure you're remembering this place correctly? Actually, would you excuse me for a moment? I want to talk to those people over there. Are those people you know? Not currently, but hopefully I can change that. Wait, Soren, I don't know anybody. Here. 